continuing on our engine teardown, a lot of the times our blade adapter doesn't come off that crankshaft very easily. And the easiest way I've found to take that off is put your mower blade bolt back in and using a small gear puller, just put it right on it like so. Just back it off. There we go. Move a little blade adapter. We're going to be removing these valve spring guides here. And you're going to need one of these. Now, I, I've seen people use screwdrivers and, and pliers, but this is a Briggs & Stratton uh, part number 19063. And it's real, we're going to do an episode just on this valve compressor. But these arms are adjustable to fit our retainer. Let me just show you uh, what we're going to try to do here. We've got a retainer at the end of this spring and we have to compress it. Okay, And the reason for that is there's a keyway in this retainer. You see how that is? In the center, our valve has a, a recess right here and when we compress this spring, it's going to allow us to move this to the left and then pop it off. Let's give it a whirl. And once you've got that adjusted, you just come down like this and it'll make it so much easier to remove and install your springs. All right, taking our compressor, we're going to wedge it in there just like so, okay, and then clamp it down. There you go. See that? Now, what I would do is I would keep this whole assembly, the retainer, the spring, and the valve, and mark it. This is our intake valve and keep this whole group together and reassemble the engine with all the intake components so we don't confuse them with our exhaust. All right, we're gonna be removing the sump cover right here. And you can do this either straight away or you can remove this seal right here. And I find that it works easier for me if I remove the seal first. It'll split it easier, but it will come apart whether you do that or not. A lot of the times when you look underneath your lawnmower, you'll see that a little bit of oil is dripping out of the bottom. It's that seal right here. And uh, I don't have the special tool to remove it, but there is an easy way to do it. You just take a sheetrock screw and you screw into it like so. And now I'm going to pull up on it. Next, we're going to be removing the sump cover. And there's two, four three-eighths inch bolts holding this on. Again, I like to go in a diagonal crisscross fashion. That's all there is to it. Now just remove them. There's also two more right here. It's 
So a total of six. All right, with that lower sump seal removed, just like that, See if we can't separate this. All right, I'll tell you the truth, that didn't come out very well. I, I kept hitting it with the rubber mallet in the meaty part of the sump cover, and eventually it did break loose. There you go. On the end of the crankshaft is a small gear. Just pull it off and be careful there's a, a, a thin washer right there that we want to keep it with. Okay. Now when you go to remove your piston, it's always a good idea to put a witness mark right here. And just a simple scratch. Sometimes it can only go on one way. Sometimes it can go on either way and they want to, uh, the way it came off is the way you want to put it back on. So just put a scratch across both sides of it. And it's just two 5 16 inch bolts. And sometimes you have to maneuver the crankshaft around to get to them easily. But you can do it. Pop that right out like so. All right. What I'm going to do is push my piston and connecting rod right on out. Just like so. Now my crankshaft should come right out like that. And the only thing left in this whole engine is this upper seal. And I'm going to pop it out right now just by uh, leveraging it out. The entire engine has been disassembled. All right, I'll clean it up and I'll catch you on the next one. If you would, uh, I'll catch you on the next one. Please give me a thumbs up if you like this and share it with people if you would. Let's get those numbers going to the million. I appreciate it. Thank you very much.